Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for what will indeed be a part of a playlist on the channel, a uh, bookshelf tour playlist here on the channel, but it's also going to be part of a two-channel event here um, between Strip Cover Lit here, where you're at now, and my personal channel, to which I will leave a pinned comment in the comment section below. You can follow me over there as well. I will be posting a video every day. Every day. I just realized I forgot to uh, turn off my air conditioning. We're going to motor through this. Every day um, in the month of September here on Strip Cover Lane, as well as on my personal channel. By the by, if you have any, any topics you want me to cover on my personal channel, which is not necessarily book related, though today's books might be over there because I will be doing nonfiction on that channel, be sure to leave me a line because I'm going to run out of... Uh, ideas for that channel really quick because there's no set um, approximation for what I should be doing. I've wasted too much time already. We're going to get right into things. Today's topic, surely, I'm going to turn that off because it's going to get real loud. Done and done. Today's topic, biographies. Bookshelf tour biographies. What biographies do I own? What people have I read about? What people would I like to read about? We're going to start. I've got 12. Not a selection I'm proud of, but I think they're a rather um, eclectic group of personalities. Uh, we're going to start right here. John Meacham, American Lion, about Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is a personality with which I will always be in love. And not because of this book. I actually haven't read this book. I have not read this. I bought it brand spanking new right before I moved off to St. Joe, where I would be um, pursuing my education, my official education from actual teachers and shit, um, which is, <clears throat> by the way, completely worthless. I don't know if you uh, have stumbled upon that fact on your own yet. Anyway, <clears throat> when I... This would have been... 2006, I read a biography on Andrew Jackson. I, uh, I was in a bad place. So I moved out of my, and I don't have said biography. I can't find it. I haven't been able to find it for a couple of years. I don't know what I've done with it. Uh, but I'm going to tell that story based on this story, based on this book, <clears throat> because it leads directly into it. But I was, um, <clears throat> when I think I did a semester of community college while still living uh, with my parents and then I moved out so you're 18 19 you're paying rent you're paying bills you're paying for community college or all of this stuff straight out of pocket so uh, you don't have any money and you're looking for so I uh, wasn't you don't get a whole lot of education at community college you really don't and I was struggling to bit and piece that degree together anyway uh, between work I was working normally two jobs one full-time job all the time but I was picking up little odds and ends of things here and there as well so um, the place where I worked was in a an outdoor mall <clears throat> pardon me I don't know why I've got all this throat stuff uh, was in an outdoor mall and I swear to god back then Barnes and Noble was open until 11 now I think they close at 8 even when it's not pandemic stuff going on. Uh, but they were open until 11 because I would close the store I was working at at 10 and then I would walk down there and browse the shelves, maybe write some poetry, whatever I was doing at the time, um, until they closed. And I would have, an, I couldn't afford books. I couldn't do it. I had no money for that. Um, I Like I say, I was paying my way through community college as well as paying my rent, as well as trying to do the bills. I was paying a truck off at the time. Uh, right when I graduated high school, I went and got a truck so that I would have dependable transportation. Um, so, that, I mean, that was that was 300 bucks a month right there just for the truck. Still drive it, by the way. Son of a bitch hasn't died yet. And um, everything was too expensive for me. But they, they ran a contest at my work, which was um, for signing people up for a a card or something, I can't remember what it was, but my store won first place, and first place was everyone in the store 
gets a $25 Visa gift card. And I had for some months been obsessed with who was the guy on the $20 bill because of his hair. That guy had wild hair. Um, he was a president, you know, Andrew Jackson. I knew the name. And I had stumbled across a biography on Andrew Jackson. I, I believe it was by a guy named Robert V. Rimini. Now, I haven't had the, the biography for some number of years now, for whatever reason. Um, but I think it was one by Robert V. Rimini, which I have realized in later years is basically um, one of these biographies that falls into the category of hero worship. But nonetheless, extremely interesting individual. And... Um, so I had been bit in piecing, I'm ashamed to say, my way through that biography as I was, I would go down there, I'd get to the Barnes Noble around 1010, right? 1010 to 1030, I'd be leafing through this biography, jumping around. And um, then I would do what, I, I would move on. But I had this $25 gift card and I was able to afford a book. So I did it, I bought that book and this was a time in my life where I was not a reader. I was, I was really in a, a rough place as far as uh, my education is concerned. And as far as w when you're working two jobs and you're trying to go to community college and you're trying to stay fit, things like that. Um, I'm sure many of you have been there. You, you just, you, you fall off in certain places and you don't have energy for everything. And, um, it was, it was rough, and I made myself finish that goddamn biography. I read it every night. I was going to make my way through that biography, and um, it was a pretty pretty dense biography. Um, but I did. I made, a, I, I made it through, and I realized I really enjoyed biographies. I was 20 years old, maybe 21 by that point, and... I knew I wanted to write. I didn't know anything else about myself. When you don't know anything else about yourself, one good place to figure out some things about yourself is to read about other people. And Andrew Jackson, what a rough and tough son of a bitch. I, I, I mean, so obviously a flawed individual. Everyone's a flawed individual. Andrew Jackson was a pretty flawed individual. And so one story I'll tell you that I learned from that biography that I... Uh, I'll try not, I've shared a lot of stories about Andrew Jackson on this channel. I think there were multiple attempts on his life um, after he was done being a professional get shot at guy. He was military. He was a military man. Um, after that, there was many attempts on his life. One of them, he was, I believe, at a funeral. Old, old, old at this time. Couldn't walk without a cane. And some son of a bitch came up to him, pulled a gun, pop. Well, the gun misfired. So he pulled a second gun. This son of a bitch came prepared. Pop. Well, that gun, it turned out, the bullet rolled out of the gun while it was in his pocket. So it was just a, a dry shot. So this son of a bitch had two guns pointed at him, pop, pop. Both of them misfired. And this little old man, this, um, th this man, he wasn't little. This guy who couldn't walk anymore without the aid of a cane, you know what he did? He chased after the son of a bitch with his cane and started hitting him with it until the guy was apprehended. But that was, that was, that, that's the rough and tough son of a bitch that was Andrew Jackson, who dueled a man because this man took out an ad in the paper saying, hey, Jackson, your wife is a whore. He took out, he challenged him to a duel with a guy who was reputedly the best shot in the West, this guy, right? They line up, and in a duel, each man gets a shot unless he's dead. So Jackson, pop, gets shot, gets shot, and the guy's freaking out. Whoa, I just shot you. What's going on here? How are you still standing? Well, the guy, the referee of the duel says, Mister, get back in your place. Jackson gets a shot. So Jackson stands there, bleeding from his chest, pulls his gun out, puts one in the guy. Pop, dead, bang, done. And his friends say, you know, they're taking him to the, the doctor and they say, what the hell, Jackson, you're shot. How did you do that? To which Andrew Jackson reportedly claimed, I would have shot him had he hit me 
in the brain. So uh, a couple years after that, I, that was probably two, two, 2000 and, 2005, 2006, um, this came out. I think this was 2008. And I, I mean, it's hardcover. I bought it then. I still haven't read it. Um, but ja I will eventually read it because Andrew Jackson is, say what you want to about him, I don't care, incredibly interesting. Incredibly interesting person. Talk about interesting people. If you want an interesting read, if you want a historical figure that would be uh, one hell of a read, Peter the Great. This is Peter the Great, uh, his life and world. Oh, that was uh, American Lion. This is Peter the Great, his life and world. I apparently made it 85 pages into this way back when. This was the fourth book that I picked up in a row that was a biography, and I did not make it through this. Uh, it was around that same time period. I was, again, it was a rough, rough time in my life. And um, so Peter the Great, so you see that? A little red bookmark there. That is right here. See that? that? That was a gift from a friend's mother. I taught her how to drive, and she gave me a gift in that little uh, that little packet there. And that's what I was using as a bookmark at the time. Still, too poor to buy bookmarks, um, and too dumb to use regular sheets of paper. So I, um, Peter the Great, was a wild son of a bitch. And he was the great for many reasons, um, not the least of which were his sexual pro... pro pro I can't say it. Um, proclivities. Uh, not the least of which were his sexual proclivities. Uh, but an incredibly interesting and complex individual. I learned about him in a college-level history course that I took in high school. Uh, but I did not, like I say, make it all the way through this. Um, definitely worth picking up. This is a, this is a honker. This is 900 pages of biography almost. Um, but yeah, Robert K. Massey, author of Castles of Steel, win it, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, it is an incredibly well-written book from my memory. It's just one of those things that I, I think I was biographied out at that point. Um, another person that I have wished to learn things from was a business mogul by the name of Andrew Carnegie. Um, many people say Carnegie. I am scarred by my high school freshman history teacher who pronounced it Carnegie. So I, uh, un I unwaveringly pronounce it Carnegie when I am talking about him. Um, but he, so I got this from a place that I would later go on to work, and it was a used book, uh, $10. One of the things, one of the reasons that I wanted to learn about Andrew Carnegie is that he, first off, super rich. Super rich would be almost illegally rich today. Um, I believe in his day. He was worth something, I just heard this, something like twice what Jeff Bezos is worth today. That is what his net worth would come out to be. But basically, from my understanding, what Carnegie, one of the things Carnegie did with that wealth is any city west of the Mississippi, he said, hey, look, you buy the books, I'll construct the building, and we'll have a library. How does that sound? Or maybe it was backwards, I, I can't remember exactly which. Uh, but that was one of the things that always made me interested in, in Andrew Carnegie. Um, there is no possible benefit to something like that for Andrew Carnegie. He wasn't going to benefit from that. From building a library and having a town put the books in it, there's no way he would see any benefit in his lifetime. But how many people have been enriched in the time since by that move? Uh, how, many people, how many people's lives have been made indelibly different by the fact that, he was, that they were able to read about things which they would never be able to read about? Um, so that's that.
Again, I feel terrible. Most of these books, actually. Yeah. Holy, holy moly. Most of these books I haven't read. Uh, moving along, this is one that I, I, I picked up just on a whim. I've only read a little bit from Raymond Carver, but this is Raymond Carver, A Writer's Life. I think I got this for a dime. The place at which I got that Andrew Carnegie book and the place at which I would later go on to work later went out of business. Um, so I was in there one day and they had most of their used books, I think were a dime. So I picked this up and um, I don't know anything at all about Raymond Carver. I know that he, he was a an author who wrote very clean prose. The writing from Raymond Carver that I have read leaves nothing in question. You know exactly what is going on, um, and it is done in such an artistic fashion that um, it, it, he's one of these writers that is inspiring to writers. Whenever I have read Raymond Carver, I wanted to then go and pin a short story of my own. Um, so that is that. Uh, Meticulous and Heartbreaking is the blurb from Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King. I think he was a writer, wasn't he? Uh, the next one, one that has gotten a lot of play recently on the channel, uh, as we have made our way through Lincoln in the Bardo, Lincoln's Melancholy. I was at that, this was the book I read immediately after my Andrew Jackson biography. Um, I was for a little while there in trouble of becoming a guy that was obsessed with presidents until I realized, hey, uh, presidents are just politicians and politicians suck. And since the time of basically, what, Teddy Roosevelt? Presidents haven't really been worth reading about. Um, Teddy Roosevelt was a wild son of a bitch. But Lincoln's Melancholy, I was at that time uh, an incredibly melancholic person. Incredibly melancholic person. Not being uh, very much in awe of my own life at all. Not very much thrilled with the way that things were going. And so to read a book called Lincoln's Melancholy, How Depression Challenged a President and Fueled His Greatness by Joshua Wolf Shank was something that uh, I won't say pulled me out of those bad times, but at least helped tug me along through them. Uh, seeing that someone could be melancholic to the point of being almost despondent at times, and still be as great an individual as Abraham, as was Abraham Lincoln, um, was something that really helped me. And it, it, so, in the in the series on Lincoln and the Bardo, I have referenced this book numerous times. And I think if Lincoln is someone in whom you are interested, and might be interested in a book like Lincoln's Melancholy. That series is pretty fruitful, I think, and Lincoln in the Bardo is a read that is worth pursuing. So maybe even reading the two in tandem, I don't think that it would be a terrible idea. Moving on, also from Hastings, which was that bookstore slash music store slash movie store slash game store slash uh, sort of rotten piece of shit store that I worked at, uh, is another individual that I was very interested in for a while, but never really read the never read the book. I I, I was bad at how, how many unread biographies do you have on your shelves? I would be interested in hearing about that. Also, if any of these people are people that you would <clears throat> want a series on this book from, let me know because I like I say I plan on doing nonfiction over on my personal channel. Comment pinned below. Follow me over there. Uh, but I, I plan on doing um, one book that's coming up in particular on that channel. Uh, if any of these people are, are authors of lives that were authored later by writers that you would like to see, let me know and I'll consider that being the, the next biography that I do over there. 
Um, but this is uh, Al Capone called Capone, The Man and the Era by Lawrence Burgreen, the author of Thousands Cheer, The Life of Irving Berlin. Uh, in this brilliant history of prohibition and its most notorious gangster, acclaimed biographer Lawrence Burgreen takes us to the gritty streets of Chicago, where Al Capone forged his sinister empire. Burgreen shows the seedy and glamorous sides of the age, the rise of prohibition, the illicit liquor trade, the battlefield that was Chicago. Delving beyond the Capone mythology, Burgreen finds a paradox, the cold-blooded killer thief, pimp, and racketeer who was also a devoted son and father, the self-styled Robin Hood who rose to the top of organized crime. Capone is a masterful portrait of the extraordinary time and of the man who reigned supreme over it all, Al Capone. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know if I would be as interested in reading this anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll just go watch the uh, the movie starring what's his name. Um, I can never remember this guy's name. I don't remember why it is. I don't know why it is. But um, yeah, uh, a biography on Al Capone. I don't know why I would have bought that. I wasn't all that interested in the mobsters and gangsters and stuff. Uh, the next book, another book that I haven't read. This is getting embarrassing at this point. Um, but. An Unfinished Life, John F. Kennedy, 1917 to 1963, by Robert Dalek. This is a beast of a book. Uh, it was massively acclaimed when it came out, a number one bestseller. And I thought that it would be worth reading. It's um, Kennedy's always someone who has been interesting to me. I uh, don't know all that much about him. He seems like... A, Maybe the absolute last president who would have been worth knowing something about. I can't think of any afterwards that were particularly accomplished in anything or interesting for any particular reason. Uh, let me know if I am wrong. He is a president whose um, wake we are still writing. I think in a lot of ways, uh, there are still, especially if you get into theories on the deep state, um, the limits of power. All the president is, is a glorified public relations man who spends his time flattering, kissing, and kicking people to get them to do whatever they are supposed to do anyway, said by Harry S. Truman, November 14th, 1947, the beginning of chapter 14 in An Unfinished Life. Um... This is one that I still do want to get around to reading. I've kicked dust up everywhere. Uh, surprise, surprise, a lot of my unread books are, are dusty. Uh, next, if you thought we were going to go through this entire portion of my bookshelf tour without hearing a goddamn thing about Ernest Hemingway, you're absolutely wrong. I have Hemingway's boat, Everything He Loved and Lost, by Paul Hendrickson. Of course, I have not read it. Um, but it is one that I imagine to be every bit as melancholic as Lincoln's melancholy. Um, everything he loved and lost. How, uh, what a surprising title. Um, I have seen two or three, three or four biographies on Ernest Hemingway. This is a guy that did lead an interesting life and told those stories a little more interestingly than maybe they happened. So it will be interesting to see exactly how these things are professed by a writer. This was um, a National Critics Circle Award finalist. I remember it being touted when it came out. Did not buy it right away. Uh, waited till it was a softback. What year was it? this? Was print? This was published in 2011. That makes me feel really old. That would have been that would have been right as Hemingway was a big deal in 
my life. That was right as I was finding Hemingway, the writer, the influence. Anyway, that's that. Um, got four left. And two of them are books I haven't read. I, like I say, I was in danger for a while of becoming one of those guys who is a presidential historian, despite the fact that presidents kind of suck. Um, especially, like I say, after maybe, maybe Teddy, maybe after Teddy, there hasn't been really a president worth, worth reading about. Uh, but this guy, David McCullough, wrote a book on this guy, Harry S. Truman. Harry S. Truman, me being from the state of Missouri, is someone whose name I have heard touted my entire life. And he was a fairly interesting individual. It will be interesting to read this and understand the nuance of how the nuance of the role that this type of stuff played in the world of Harry Truman and in the ascendance of a Missouri boy. Uh, Harry Truman, for anyone who didn't know, Harry S. Truman's middle name was S, right? That is probably one of the things that in the state of Missouri you were preached to from the day of your birth. Harry Truman's middle name was S. Um, so, I mean, basically a politician, but he was in World War I. Uh, there is some interesting stuff to do there. He was obviously a Missouri boy, which especially at the, I mean, what year was Truman born? Um, do, we're probably, I mean, we're 1895 maybe, somewhere in there, we'll say. Uh, 1895, 1900, no, not 1900, that would have been, that would have been too late. Um, but if you were born at that time in the state of Missouri, you were definitely not expecting to be destined for greatness. Um, this was not even at the time flyover country. So the one thing that I'm always astonished at when reading about Missourians from this era, Truman's era, or before, and um, great individuals in the 1800s time period, in American 1800s time period. Almost all of them have family that came through Kentucky for some reason. I have to figure out what was going on in Kentucky at that point in time. Uh, it's weird that Lincoln has family roots in Kentucky. I believe Truman does. The next individual I'm going to talk about does. Um, Andrew Jackson passed through Kentucky, I think. I think he was a lawyer in Kentucky for a couple years. Um, the next individual I'm talking about, another Missouri boy, Jesse James. Jesse James, Last Rebel of the Civil War by T.J. Stiles. This was, I think, the final biography that I, that I finished in that little stint in 2005, 2006, 2007-ish. Another individual who was extremely interesting. I think I've told a couple stories about um, Jesse James on my, um, what is it called? The Weekly Reader series that is no longer weekly. Uh, but I do, I do hope to get back to it at some point in time. But I think I've told a couple of stories about him through that series from time to time. Very interesting. Very interesting guy. Um, no good rotten son of a bitch, for sure. But most times, those are the interesting people. Um, I don't know what else to say necessarily about it. This is a biography that paints Jesse James not as... A, obviously from the title, paints Jesse James not as a thief, paints Jesse James not as the Robin Hood type individual that he played in folklore of the day, that painted Jesse James not as a swashbuckler. This is a biography that painted Jesse James not as a, not simply as the cult hero, 
which he would become, but paints him as he might, in fact, have painted himself a rebel of the Civil War. He was a Southerner in the Civil War. He was, for anyone who doesn't know, the history of Missouri and Kansas sort of in the Civil War was a, when you hear the Civil War was brother versus brother, neighbor versus neighbor, this is the area of the country where that was especially true. And he, I mean, marauders, marauders ran this area. And Jesse James group at the time, the the younger boys and Jesse James, they were uh, chief among some of these groups at that time. Jesse James, I think, was 14 or 15 in the Civil War when he started in the Civil his actions as a guerrilla in the Civil War. Um, but yeah, these were, so one of the stories of Jesse James at that time, being such a son of a bitch, he was in Nebraska corralling about, and he was about to steal somebody's, um, somebody had finished a saddle and had put it up on their um, fence to dry at the edge of their property. Well, he snake crawled up to it, reached up and was going to grab it to steal it. Guy saw him, I guess, pop, put one in old Jesse's cavity here, body cavity. Uh, center, center, center mass, high center mass. And um, he thought he was going to die. I, th I don't think it was lodged in his lung, maybe? I think it was close to his lung, impacted his lung, something like that. Um, he was going to die, and he was staying with his mother, Z Zarelda, I think, in Nebraska territory. I don't think it was a state yet. Was it a state? In Nebraska, either way. And he was dying on his mother's couch. And he told him, his brother Frank, and I think it was the younger boys, look, I don't want to die in a Yankee state. Take me south of that border so I can die in Missouri. So they, they carried, well, I mean, in folklore, maybe this didn't actually happen, they carried the couch outside into a carriage, Drove him across the border, set the set the uh, couch in a field, so he'd die in Missouri. Uh, they went back later to check on him, and apparently the tough son of a bitch was still alive. Uh, so that is not, in fact, how Jesse James passed. Interesting story, though. Uh, Jesse James, Last Rebel of the Civil War, is an extremely good read. It is impressively well written. And it is a story, uh, if you have not seen the movie starring Brad Pitt, uh, Jesse James, um, that coward, that, the assassination of Jesse James by that coward Robert Ford. That's what it's called. This is a, a biography that goes so hand in hand with that movie. Just the feel of it. And, and, and all of the characterizations of the people in it, that I saw it months after finishing this book. And I thought that it was a, not, a, a movie of the book. Like, it felt that close. So those two are definitely worth pursuing one after the other. The penultimate book in my biography collection is the very first biography, I, I swear, I've been saying it for two years now, I think, I'm going to eventually get to on my personal channel. I was going to do it here at first when I first got it. Uh, Walter Isaacson, Leonardo da Vinci. I have, I'm missing two biographies. I have another Leonardo biography that I read halfway through and stopped. I don't know where that's at either, but um, in fact, I have a couple videos on this channel from that biography. Uh, from 2017, I think. But uh, this is... Walter Isaacson is a master. And I have bit and pieced little, little nuggets from this biography. And I've probably seen 
maybe five documentaries on Leonardo as well as having studied a little bit about him in a couple classes that I took in college. This is going to be a treat. Um, I think I'm going to just go like 10 pages at a time and relay one story from those 10 pages because, it, boy, it, Leonardo. I think one of the first chapters in here is called I Can Also Paint. Um, yeah, introduction, I Can Also Paint. He was at one point in his life selling himself as um, a technician, as a warlord, as a um, as an individual who was designing weapons. That's how he wanted to make his name. Um, turns out he would finish these uh, little. He would write letters, and he would he would finish them with. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can also paint. And um, <laughs> just to get commissions, just to live. Um, but yeah, he, he, he was uh, starting from bastard origins, becoming one of the most, maybe the most famous painter of all time, possibly the most famous polymath of all time. I mean, just just inc an incredible story so again i'm gonna at some point start making my way through this on the personal channel um but my final biography you may notice it's not behind me anymore i replaced it with derby words or wicked words a book that was gifted to me in grad school uh because i i'm a big fan of uh saying fuck einstein again by Walt walter isaacson if you are looking for direction in life, if you are looking for a good read, if you are trying to get into biographies, this is where you should start. This book is so well written about such an interesting character and such a world changer that I cannot, cannot, cannot express thoroughly enough that you should read it. There are so many good stories passed on in this book. One of my favorite character quirks of Einstein, Einstein, when he was a patent office clerk, he had two really good friends um, and they would hang out all the time. And one of them hated the smell of cigar smoke. And the other two, Loved to smoke cigars. So they would smoke cigars while their friend wasn't there. But what they would do is they would go smoke them on his bed. Uh, that's just, that's a rotten thing to do. That's a rotten thing to do. And Einstein didn't care. He was a, a prankster and a funny guy. And just so he was creative more than intelligent. Uh, you will read in this the way he did his his real work was what was called thought experiments. Ah, you know, if someone is in an elevator and the cable snaps, they are in that elevator, but they will become essentially weightless as they will be floating, falling at the same rate as the elevator. But in the world they encompass, they're flying. You know, all of these weird little things that he would think about and the thought experiments he would go on. And um, what's the famous quote from him? A storm broke loose in my mind when he was on the train looking at the, in Bern, Bern looking at the clock tower. And he, that's when he developed his theory of relativity. Uh, it is the book from which I learned about uh, Annus Mirabilis, the miracle year, and that there are more than just Einstein's miracle year. And uh, that is something that has always um, inspired me. Uh, they have, this biography has pictures of Einstein's desk, I think, the way he left it on the day he died. Um, a great book. If you have not read this 
uh, do yourself a favor and at least seek it out. And if you can't sit down and read all the way through a biography because they're so dense and you know there's not a whole lot of characterization, the characters are all real, you got to go look them up to understand what's going on with them, just buy this book and make your way through it. But that is all I have for biographies, minus the two that I can't find, and I'm going to have to kick my own ass and figure it out, and hopefully by the time I get through my uh, entire bookshelf tour, I can have those to, to show you. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for this episode. Uh, again, if there are any of these people that you would like to hear about over on my personal channel, be sure to leave a comment letting me know. Uh, check out the comment, go down to the comment section, tell me I'm a dumbass, click on the link to my personal channel, maybe subscribe over there. Look, I'm doing this um, video every day thing because my birthday is in the month of September, and um, it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribed over there as well. This is something that I, I enjoy doing, and um, I'm not going to stop it just because I'm getting old now, right?